Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, Inkscape update after dark. Uh, my name is Martin. I am an Inkscape developer, and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, usually, I would give you an update video like in the morning time, uh, but I just wasn't ready, and uh, the reason for that will become clear. So, first of all, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors. Uh, basically, my work on Inkscape is paid for by uh, you, the users. Um, you have the foresight to recognize the fact that um, open source projects like Inkscape require people to work on them and require people to listen to the kinds of things that you need to actually get done on them. And uh, so in exchange for your support, I basically program Inkscape in a way that you will find hopefully delightful. Um, for the last year or so, I've actually been focused almost relentlessly on CMYK. It's a task in Inkscape which has been um, difficult and I fully understand from this perspective why so many developers before me uh, were reluctant to ever pursue this uh, project. But um, I've come this far and as they say, in for a penny, in for a pound. So we will continue relentlessly on until the CMYK is actually done, uh, no matter how long it takes. Um, so <clears throat> why why am I doing this in the middle of the night? So um, the, what I've been doing is essentially um, uh, refactoring the color branch uh, so that it both functions and testing all of the functionality that I've broken. And I've been listening to my reviewers who have been strident, I, I will admit, uh, sometimes frustrating about fixing all of the small imperfections in the uh, new code that we have for basically controlling colors and um, converting them and remembering what colors things are. And um, that process is sort of ongoing. And I was getting bored. Yeah, I was getting bored. Um, you know, if, if, there's only so much twiddling of little pieces of code that you can do that have no meaningful impact that it's all just about semantics the end the end the end of the day so i decided to work on a theoretical approach to um the actual display component of getting cmyk uh rendering or, or mixing to happen inside of inkscape itself um the way in which we currently do this mixing is is that we we take the uh, CMYK color that you've chosen, we turn that color spot color should we say, into sRGB, and then we render that sRGB color, and this kind of works. Like you you will definitely get a result. It'll be something close to what would happen when you uh, ask the printer to print that out, but it won't be exact. Because the conversion to sRGB uh, basically means that there's a lot of inaccuracies uh, to do with how that ink would, for instance, gradiate if you have a gradient or blur if you have a blur, etc. And so the ideal situation you want to be in is you want to be able to render in CMYK, uh, including gradients, including blurs, including everything else, and then convert the finalized rendering into uh, sRGB for display, right? So as you're editing, you're editing in CMYK directly, and then only for that final display step do you actually get the the red, the red, green, and blue pixels that get put on your screen. So I started with a theoretical approach where I used uh, Cairo, which is the which is the rendering framework that Inkscape currently uses, um, and the new color code to basically lie to Cairo. Uh, basically what I would do is I, I would feed it cyan, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow and black channels and as if they were the red channel and then I would it, it would just render those images as if they were basically red and black images and um, you know you can see how if I just drag this image in here uh, you know what I'll, I'll, I'll post these up because they'll be easier to see uh, you can see we have a very red and black image. And what I did then is I then exported those all out as PNGs. I then used some command line wizardry to turn those into grayscale images. And then I compiled those grayscale images into a CMYK TIFF, which, you know, 
when you look at it, this example image that I chose doesn't look that bad. Uh, the gradation, it definitely looks different than the PNG would when it's exported in sRGB, but there's no great weirdnesses that are happening here. Um, so I thought, okay, great. Let me try uh, an image that's just uh, CM, CMYK ICC, like in the SVG itself, that's basic and it contains all of the kind of mixing that you would expect. Um, Unfortunately, that SVG file that I constructed by hand, I, I wrote the XML out, uh, broke the, the, the color branch that I, I'm working on. And so I spent an entire week rewriting, refactoring, fixing all of those problems, writing more tests, uh, figuring out like what was going on. There were some mixing issues, a bunch of other things. But that's what I finally finished tonight, is I finally managed to get, uh, should we say, a, a result. And I think I think what's important to, to recognize is that this is a this is a failure. Um, so you can see how I have the uh, cyan, the magenta, the yellow, and black, right? Uh, don't worry about the fact that the, the, they're not gradiented. Uh, the alpha channel has been removed because this is just a TIFF file. And then I have my spots here, so you can see the cyan, magenta, yellow. The reason why there's a couple of different blacks is because I wanted to test uh, true black versus um, rich black. Uh, and that's what's go going on with the Inkscape lo logo here. Um, now, the issue with this is to do with the way the mixing happens when there is transparency. Because if you're rendering out each of the uh, component plates individually and then remixing them back in, the alpha channel itself can either be multiplied or not. And if it's done wrong, you get this. And I'm not entirely sure whether it's possible to undo this in the way the Cairo renderer works. If it is possible, then I'll figure it out and we'll use Cairo to do CMYK. Um, if it's not possible, then we'll probably need a new renderer, like an entire new way of rendering SVG out uh, that honors CMYK directly. Um, and that will be obviously a much larger project to be able to achieve that. Um, but just to give you a, a, an example of the kinds of issues, um, when you have yellow that overlaps with black, this color here shouldn't be lighter, right? Because painting a bunch of yellow ink on top of a bunch of black ink should just be black ink. You shouldn't be able to see the yellow. Um, similar problems ha happen here between the um, magenta and the yellow. This color is wrong. And in fact, if you if I if I boot up the uh, the grayscales. So this is this is the magenta plate. If I just move, move this over, um, the magenta plate here, you can see, uh, you shouldn't be able to see any cutouts on in in these corners where one ink overlaps with another ink. You know, this plate should be able to tell you that it's just entirely magenta here, and it, and the reason why like you have these cutouts is because the alpha channel itself is interacting poorly with the overlapping areas. Um, okay, so I'm disappointed clearly that this isn't as easy as, it, as I theoretically thought it might be, but you know, I'm also not surprised. If it was as easy as this, I'm sure somebody would have done it before. Um, so we'll just have to keep on trying. Now obviously I was doing this because I wanted to not be bored and, and, and doing ex experiments is definitely a way to not be, get bored. Uh, but the fixes and stuff that have actually gone in because of all of this work are still very, very useful. I believe that the way in which I was mixing colors, there were some caching issues and some other various problems that were definitely problematic, which are now fixed. Happy with that. Um, and I'm, I am getting through all of the code reviews. So hopefully it'll, the, all of this will get merged in any way. And so we'll have a much stronger basis. So if we if it turns out that I do need to write an entire renderer in order to get the actual CMYK rendering while editing, uh, then at least at least I'm safe to, to know that like we'll have that basis in place um, and this work won't be for naught. Um, so anyway, this has been a long video. Uh, thank you very much for joining me this evening. Um, I will see you next time and uh, please leave your messages below. And uh, I want to give a special request out to everybody who believes in this pro project. Um, I need you to spread these videos 
as far as possible. One of the problems for the past uh, year and a half has been stagnation, as I've not been able to access Twitter. And it basically means that I'm not reaching as many people as I used to be able to reach. And so I'm not able to grow the Patreon as much as I used to be able to, because I'm just not reaching as many Inkscape users as I used to. Um, but, but you guys will have access to more p people because you probably know some artists, you probably know some people that might be interested in this. Uh, this project needs as many as many hands as possible. Uh, and I think with your help, just even if you can't subscribe to the Patreon yourself, if you spread the, the, the video, I'd be very, very great, grateful. Uh, this project would be very, very great, grateful. And um, yeah, thank you very much.